Gleam is a statically typed functional programming language designed for building reliable and scalable applications. Created and primarily developed by Louis Pilfold, Gleam is backed by Fly.io and runs on the Erlang Beam VM, though it also compiles the JavaScript with TypeScript definitions so it can run in the browser. I've recently fallen in love with Gleam for its simplicity-first approach to programming, but I'll give more of my opinions towards the end of the video. Today, we're embarking on a brief expedition through Gleam for developers who already speak at least one language. Are you ready? By the way, I've started writing over on Polar, an awesome platform helping open source developers get paid for what they do. My content is entirely free and includes my newsletter. Check it out in the description. Get started by installing Gleam and its dependencies. The easiest way is by using Homebrew, as this will also install Erlang for you. Windows users can install Gleam using Scoop. Install the Gleam plugin for VS Code or a language server implementation for any major text editor. Set up your first Gleam project using Gleam New followed by your project name. In the source directory created, you'll see a .gleam file named after your project. This contains a main function and is the entry point to your program or library. The test directory contains a a simple test that will be run with Glee Unit, a unit testing library for Gleam. Run Gleam Run to run your program, or use Gleam Build to build it for the Beam VM. Create a variable using the let keyword. Variables and the values they reference are immutable, so they cannot be changed. You can reassign a variable with another let binding, but this will not change the original value. Variables and functions are snake cased in Gleam, and this will be enforced. Gleam will warn on unused variables unless you prefix the variable name with an underscore. Add a type annotation to a variable declaration using a colon. Type annotations are always optional in Gleam. Types can always be inferred from literals and operators. Gleam's int type represents whole numbers. On the Erlang VM, these have no minimum or maximum size, but they're represented by the number type in JavaScript, which is a 64-bit float. Gleam also has float for floating point numbers, ball for true and false values, and string for strings. You can use underscores and numeric literals for better readability, or use 0b, 0x, and 0o for binary, x, and octal values. Boolean literals are always capitalized, and string values are defined using double quotes. Strings can also span multiple lines and include various escape characters. Gleam's final primitive type is nil. Unlike many languages, Gleam's nil is a unit type and is not a valid value of any other types. Gleam has no concept of null or undefined. You can create an alias for any primitive type using the type keyword. Define a constant using the const keyword at the top level of a module. Constants must be known at compile time and cannot include function outputs. Gleam int values use all the standard operators for common mathematical operations. This also includes comparison operators. Instead of panicking, division by zero is defined to be zero. Float use the same operators suffix by a dot, except for equality operators, which are the same for all types. There is no modulo operator for floats. Boolean operators are all as expected, concatenate strings with a concatenation operator. Define a block using a pair of curly braces. Blocks are groups of one or more expressions that evaluate to the value of the last expression. Variables defined within a block are scoped to that block. You can use blocks to determine operation order in mathematical expressions. Gleam doesn't use parentheses for this like many other languages. Import other modules into your Gleam code using the import keyword. Imports use the library name slash module syntax. Gleam has a robust standard library, available by importing modules prefixed with Gleam. For example, you can find useful functions like max and clamp in the Gleam int module for dealing with integers. There's a module for all built-in data types. You can also import functions from modules to be used in an unqualified fashion using the curly brace syntax, though this is typically discouraged for readability. Create a list of values using square bracket syntax. Gleam lists are heterogeneous, and the type annotation uses parentheses to declare the contained type. As with all values in Gleam, lists are immutable and are singly linked lists under the hood. For this reason, index accesses and length calculations are expensive. You can add elements to the front of a list using the dot dot syntax. This will not modify the original list. And if you love content like this, you might like to add me to your list of subscriptions. There's no if else clauses in Gleam, so branching control flow is managed through pattern matching. Use a case statement in Gleam to start pattern matching. The patterns defined inside the block will be matched against the value following the case keyword. Use an underscore to define the default case. Branches can also be blocks and will evaluate to the last expression in the block. Provide a variable name as a pattern to match against any value and then assign to that name, which can then be used in that branch. Match against the string prefix using the concatenation operator. When matching against lists, an underscore will indicate a single item of any value, whereas the spread pattern will match against the rest of the list. You can also match against an empty list or extract values from a list by giving a variable name to either an individual value or the tail of the list. You use a pipe to accept multiple patterns for a branch or pattern match against multiple values at a time by comma separating the subject values. You can use pattern aliases to assign sub-patterns to variables. For example, this will match the first list in a list of lists if it's not empty. Finally, you can apply a limited set of Boolean conditions to your patterns to match conditionally. Define a function using the fn keyword followed by the function name. Parameter type annotations are optional, as is the return type annotation, which is defined using an error. Functions can contain multiple statements, but there's no return keyword in Gleam, so you can't exit early. Instead, a function will return the value of the last expression in its body. If there's no defined return value, the function
function will return nil. Add labels to your function arguments to give parameters an external name as well as an internal one. Arguments with labels can be passed in any order, or the labels can be omitted entirely. Anonymous function literals can be defined by leaving out the function name. Functions are typed using this syntax, which shows the parameter types and the return type. Like most functional languages, functions in Gleam can be passed as parameters and assigned to variables. If you're defining a single argument anonymous function that only exists, pass that argument into another function. You can define it using the shorthand function capture syntax. In this example, the add one function is a function with a single argument that gets passed into the add method with one as the other parameter. Create function pipelines using the pipe operator. This will pass the return value of the previous function into the first parameter slot of the next function in the pipeline. If you'd like to pass it into another parameter slot, you can define that with an underscore. Create a generic function by specifying a type variable name as a type annotation. These are always lowercase and can be used anywhere in the function signature. Gleam doesn't support looping like many other languages. Iteration is done instead through recursion. Gleam has built-in tail call optimization and will automatically apply optimization strategies where it can. I'd recommend reading up on this more in the documentation. Many common list operations that require iteration are available in the Gleam list module of the standard library, such as map, filter, reduce, and each, along with more complex operations like permutations and size chunk. Create a tuple using the hash sign followed by parentheses. Tuples have strict types. Access data in a tuple using index dot notation. Indexing starts at zero. Create types with variants using the type keyword followed by a name and a block with a constructor for each variant of the type. These can be pattern matched using a case expression. Variants can hold other data. This is called a record. The data in a variant can be given an optional label, which can then be used in the constructor. A type with a single record variant is equivalent to a struct in many other languages. If all variants of a type have a field of the same name and type in the same position, this field can be accessed using dot notation. Otherwise, fields in records can only be accessed during pattern matching. You can create generic custom types using lowercase type names as with generic functions. For example, this is a generic result type that takes either an OK or error value. In fact, result is actually a built-in Gleam type that is useful when a function could return an error. You can find functions that make working with results easier in the Gleam result module of the standard library. The Gleam standard library also includes many useful types. The option type is used when a value may or may not be present, or you can use a dict from Gleam dict to create a hash map. Export a function or type from a module using the pub keyword. Modules are named after their containing file in the source directory and are path-based. These can then be imported in other parts of your code and must use a fully qualified name. Internal code that should never be accessible to external programs can be defined in source slash internal .gleam or any file in the source slash internal directory. Gleam's approach to first class functions and lack of methods on types can often lead to highly indented code. To avoid this, use the use keyword followed by a variable name, a left pointing arrow, and then a function to call. The function must take a callback as the final argument. You can then use the newly created variable in an almost procedural style, and Gleam will automatically construct the callbacks for you. However, be careful of overusing this, as it can become difficult to read. Gleam is very capable and can also use code from the Erlang and Elixir ecosystems via the hex package repository. I won't go into that in this video, so take a look at the documentation. You'll also find information on the Gleam website about a few other topics, such as bit arrays, unit testing, distribution, and deployment. Also, since Gleam runs on the Erlang Beam VM, it has some excellent concurrency primitives, which are definitely worth taking a look at if you need to deal with highly scalable workloads. Gleam is the first time I've learned a functional programming language, and so far I've been really loving it. The simplicity is very attractive. It reminds me of a functional Go, and I was able to pick up the basics very quickly. I definitely recommend keeping an eye on Gleam. Also, be sure to let me know if you'd like more Gleam videos. If Gleam's not your cup of tea though, and you prefer something a bit lower level, you might like this video, where I take you on a super speedy tour of Zig.